Hey everyone, I'm Sarah with Fisher Price Ranch. First off, please don't forget to subscribe. So today, uh, I'm going to show you guys what it's like to have a goat farm and live in a trailer. Uh, I have to make goat cheese because my tiny little refrigerator is so full of goat milk that I have no room. Um, but before we get started, I do want to apologize. I know it's been a little while since I've done a video. Um, I'm just kind of in a lull right now. Uh, we're still waiting for our house to sell. Um, so far we've had the inspection done and it went well. There was a couple of things that I had to get done uh, to make the buyers happy, which we got done already. Um, fingers crossed all goes well. We should be closing in about six days. So until that happens, we're just kind of stuck. Like I said, in a lull, there's really nothing going on um, unless something randomly comes up, which it really hasn't. So um, that's kind of my update for the house. Uh, let's get started making goat cheese. All right, so we have a little bit of table space, um, or a little bit of counter space, and our tiny little stove. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't have a, a big pot that will fit. If you guys have seen my other cheese making videos, my pot is about this tall. So I can't use it, so we're going to use a double boiler. I have to get the other half of the pot. Ignore my extremely full refrigerator. Uh, we're having to cram everything in here. But as you can see, I've got a gallon and a half of milk there. Um, I've got another half gallon there. I've got a jar of milk there. So we're just trying to shove milk in here wherever we can. And I am out of space, so we're going to make cheese today. All right. So unfortunately, another thing that I have to deal with um, is a small pot, so I can only do so much at a time. So it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, make all this cheese, but I think I can fit three quarters of a gallon in this one. So we're going to start with that. I'm probably going to have to make three batches today. Um, so what we're going to do first is pour the milk in here. Now this milk is actually already um, getting a little bit, I guess, sour. Uh, the nice thing is raw goat milk never goes sour. You can always use it. Yep, it definitely has a different smell to it. Now, I've left milk in the fridge I've forgotten about for like six months, and I can still use it. So it's not like store-bought milk that once it's bad, it's bad. So as you guys can see, there's a nice thick chunky cream on top of that. You'll see it fall in here. So I can fill this up pretty high because we're not boiling the milk. We're just getting it nice and hot. So yeah, that fit about uh, one and a half jars. So yeah, it's probably going to take about three um, times of doing this. Now with this stove we're going to use a lighter and there we go. So now we're going to heat this milk to a round. I've been testing it out a little bit. We're going to heat it to a round um, 115 degrees. Um, I know with normal like farmer's cheese you heat it to about 80 degrees, but I seem to get a little bit more yield on about 115 degrees. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so while we're waiting for that to heat up, I'm going to get everything ready. So that's about three quarters of a gallon. So we're going to do two thirds of a cup of our acid, which there's a couple different ways, a couple different acids that you can use. You have your rennet. We also have lemon juice. And then we have white or apple cider vinegar. I have never used the apple cider vinegar before, but I think we're going to try that one out today. And then what I do is we actually made, um, on the last batch, we made, if I could find it, in my refrigerator, somewhere in here. Maybe we ended up using it all. Nope, there it is. We made a uh, ricotta cheese, and Brandon actually made a goat meat lasagna with our homemade ricotta cheese and oh my god was it good um, so I can add to this if we make more ricotta cheese 
which is what I use the lemon juice for. Uh, when you uh, make your cheese, you're going to pick your one acid, which we're going to use our vinegar. And then when you reboil your whey, I use another acid, and then that'll bring out the other cheese. And that's when we use the lemon juice. So I think we'll go ahead and try both today. Um, so now we're just waiting for this to get up to temperature. So we're almost there. We're going to go ahead and this is our apple cider vinegar with the mother. So we're going to shake it up real good. And we're going to do, like I said, about two-thirds of a cup. There we go. Right there. All right, so our milk has come up to temp, and because of my small space and lack of pots, what we're going to do is pour the milk in this bowl. That way, I can start heating the next batch almost immediately. It's already starting to chunk up. And I haven't even put the um, the acid in yet. That's just how much um, cream there was in there. So that should re this batch should really make a lot of cheese. All right. So that's done. So now what we're gonna do is um, we're going to add in our acid slowly while you're stirring. So again, this is the apple cider vinegar. And we're just going to slowly stir this in and it's going to start to separate. Okay. Once we have it mixed really well, we're going to let it sit. And this is going to sit for about 15 minutes. So probably in about 5 minutes, we're going to start our next batch on the stove. So it's exactly 11 o'clock right now. So at 11.15, we will be straining this milk. In the meantime... We are going to get this next milk ready to start heating. So it's been about five minutes. We're going to go ahead and start this next batch of milk. There we go. We're going to let that get heated up, and then by the time this is about ready, this should be ready to strain. Now, because I'm making at least three different batches, I think we'll try three different types of acid. So the first one was our apple cider vinegar. We'll see how much yield we get from that. This next batch we're going to do a white vinegar. And then the third batch we'll do a straight lemon juice. See what the difference is. Alright, so it's been 15 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and strain this. Um, I know a lot of people use cheesecloth. Um, I, I don't like cheesecloth because it seems to get stuck in between the layers and then you lose cheese. Now I found this strainer with, with tiny little holes, you can barely see them, and it's the same size holes as cheesecloth. 
This way, I don't lose any cheese and it's a lot easier to deal with and clean. So we're going to go ahead and strain this into this bowl here. And your cheese usually sits at the bottom. So I get so far and then what we'll do is this is your whey that's sitting down here and this is the one that we're going to use to reheat and get our ricotta cheese. So we're going to take one of our clean jars and pour all this whey in here, whoops, and not make a mess if we can help it. Now we can strain out the rest of our cheese. And there's all of our cheese. Now so far I don't know that I like that vinegar because as you can see I mean, I got maybe a cup of cheese out of that, out of a three quarters of a gallon. It's not horrible, but I think we could do a lot better. So I bet you will get a lot of ricotta cheese out of this batch of whey. So now I'm just going to strain out all that excess whey. While that strains, we're going to go ahead and move our hot milk from the next batch over to the bowl and we're going to try the white vinegar this time <coughs> excuse me all right here is our white vinegar Already I could see a difference from the apple cider vinegar to this white vinegar. Let me zoom in for you guys. Ooh, sorry. Look at how chunky that is already. And all I did was stir it. So already, I've, I've always kind of favored the white vinegar. We're going to get a lot of cheese out of this batch. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think what we'll do is we'll mix all of our cheeses together into this one big bowl and just make one big batch of cheese, <clears throat> even though it's made differently. I think it would be interesting, an interesting mix of cheeses together. So I think that's what we're going to do. So now this cheese, we're going to chunk it into this bowl. And you guys can see how how easy it is to clean that, this strainer, and uh, you don't lose your cheese. If you guys use cheesecloth, you'll know you lose some of your cheese in between the cheesecloth. This way you don't lose any of it. So there's our cheese. You can see it's not a whole lot. It's still slightly straining, but mostly... We're going to leave it a little bit wet cheese until we mix in whatever we feel like herbs and spices and stuff. And then once we get our final cheese, then we'll strain it some more and get the rest of this whey out of it. So now that this is sitting, we're going to start our next batch of milk. Alright, so letting that sit. Open up our next milk. Woo, look at all that cream. That's the one thing I do like about these Kikos, they produce a lot of cream. This milk has only been sitting, I think, about four or five days, and they just have a ton of cream. So we definitely get a lot of cheese out of these girls.
Alright. So we're going to let this one sit for a few more minutes and then we'll start this milk and get it going. Alright, so now it's time to strain our second cheese. This one was with the white vinegar, which I already can tell I'm going to like a lot better. our way real quick. As you guys can see, there's a lot more cheese in this batch than the other one. So you guys can see the difference in that. There we go. So this little bit here compared to all this, it's a big difference. So definitely I, I like the white vinegar better than the apple cider vinegar. A lot more cheese yield. So we're going to let that strain and then we'll mix them together. Alright, so this next batch is ready to strain. I went ahead and decided to do the rest of them in the white vinegar because I'm limited on how much lemon juice I have. And that's the one I use to um, make my ricotta. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the milk in the white vinegar. into our cheese over here. This milk is ready. So I'm going to move it over. And this is our last batch of milk. Adding in our white vinegar. And then next we're going to start recooking our whey and make our ricotta. It's the same steps. Your uh, heat on your milk gets a little bit higher though. Alright. So now we're going to take our whey and start adding it into our pot here. Now 
And now we're going to let this sit. Alright, so our first batch of whey is ready to go. Nice and hot. Okay, and remember this time we're using a different acid, so we're going to be using lemon juice. We're going to do the same amount, two-thirds of a cup. that one sit for 15 minutes and then we'll be ready to strain and see how much ricotta cheese we get. <clears throat> Alright, so it's time to see how much ricotta cheese we got. You don't normally get a whole lot out of the batch. Right now we're just getting into the whey, and now that we've cooked it twice, we're at the point of saving the whey protein for later use. So I'm going to put it in gallon jugs, and we can freeze this for later. Use it to cook other foods, anything you would add water to, you add whey protein instead. Uh, we also used it when, if you guys remember when Zara was pregnant and she had her puppies and she was actually losing some weight so we would pour some of this on her food and it actually helped her gain weight which was really good. Alright, so now here is our ricotta cheese at the bottom. So as you guys can see, it's not a lot of cheese, but you still get at least some. And we'll put this in a separate jar from the other cheese. And sometimes I'll strain the bottom of it twice, because now I've got a little bit of a film here. And it could strain a little bit better on the second round. And I always go around the edge of the strainer, because then the cheese falls in the center. As you guys can see, I did get some more cheese. Alright, so as you can see, it's not like a whole lot of cheese. It definitely does take a lot to get a good amount of ricotta cheese. Probably why it's so expensive in the store. But we've got a couple more batches to do. So we should go to get a, get a decent amount. Well, here's our final product. So this is our ricotta cheese, and you can kind of see the consistency of it. So as you can see, we don't get a whole lot, but it's a decent amount. And then our other cheese, this is only half. Uh, we got quite a bit, and I, I keep it as like a spreadable cheese, so it's a little thicker than the ricotta. And we seasoned it with just a little bit of salt, garlic, onion, and then my favorite, new cheese. We add liquid smoke. Uh, so it has the smoky flavor. It's really good for, like, we made um, grilled ham and cheese sandwiches, but with this cheese, and so it had that nice smoke flavor. We've put it on goat burgers, um, and it's really good. gives it a really good flavor. 
All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.